Hey, what's going on guys? How to do everything here and in today's video we're going to be talking all about soldering. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a basic solder connection uh, between two electrical wires. Um, if you're not familiar with soldering, soldering is when you take a small piece of metal, uh, a certain type of metal, and you melt it um, you melt it onto other pieces of metal and when it hardens it joins the two pieces together. It's used quite often in the electrical industry. A lot of circuit boards have soldered connections and any good reliable um, wiring connection aside from terminals will be a soldered connection. Uh, it lasts a long time, it's really durable and it gives you the least resistance between the two pieces um, of wire. So a few things you're going to need. First off you'll need a soldering gun. Uh, this is a Weller soldering gun. I want to say it is a 60 watt, which is a pretty common size. Um, Weller WPS 18 MP. It's about $30 from Lowe's. Really great price point for a soldering gun. It'll do most of your household soldering duties uh, and even some of the bigger stuff. So you need a soldering gun and you'll need some heat shrink or something similar. Some people use electrical tape. I prefer heat shrink. And this will be to cover your connection after you make it. You'll need the actual solder itself. And it's a flux core solder. And depending on what size of wire you're soldering will determine the size of solder. Obviously if you have a smaller soldering iron then you can't go with a really thick solder because it'll have trouble heating it up and melting it. Also if you go with a smaller 30 watt or some 15 watt soldering iron, you're not going to find yourself uh, being able to solder thick electrical wire. It just doesn't have enough power to heat the wire up to draw the solder in. Uh, the easiest way to purchase, because there's so many different kinds of solder, is most places will have what they call electrical solder, and that's pretty much all you need if you're doing wiring connections. Obviously, you'll need your uh, two circuits or two wires that you're going to be joining, and for this demonstration, I've just got two small cut pieces of wire. And you don't have to have this, but being that there's one person here, you'll want some sort of clamp or something to hold the wires. Because when you're holding the soldering iron and you're holding the solder in the other hand, sometimes it's difficult to hold the wires in place also. So I'll use this. They call this the helping hands or the third hand. You can get these at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. I think it's like 10 bucks, if that. And it gives you a couple extra hands to grip items when you're working with your hands. So the first thing we want to do is power on the soldering iron. Uh, some of them automatically come on when they're plugged in. This one has a switch. We'll go ahead and turn it on. You see it has a red light. That tells me that it's heating up. And while we're letting that heat up, I'm going to go ahead and get a towel wet, uh, a small towel or a sponge. And we want to clean the surface of the soldering gun. You see there's a lot of built up um, solder on the tip of it. It's kind of dirty. So we'll get that so we can clean it up as soon as it heats up. All right, we've got our damp rag and you can see now the red light has gone to a green light. That means that the soldering iron is heated up. All right, so we'll take the damp rag and we'll lightly dab it. You see it cinching or singeing. And that's why we want to use a damp rag because a, a dry rag will burn. You get a foul smell and it'll, you know, obviously the, the rag itself will burn. So, our tip's clean now, soldering gun's heated up. Now we're gonna prep our wire. You're gonna wanna get a good clean cut and strip back a little bit longer than typical. Get a good cut on that. Strip back a little bit longer than typical uh, for a terminal connection. And we do that just to give us plenty of copper for the solder to adhere to. And now we'll do the same thing with the other one. Good clean cut. And we'll put it back. And you can see nice clean copper is always going to solder the best. The solder is going to adhere to it. If you have dirty copper, you're going to have a hard time getting the solder to stick to it. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put just one piece for now in our helping hands. Turn it so you can see it. And I'm going to zoom in on this and we're going to go ahead and do what we call tinning the copper. To tin the copper, what we're going to do is we're first going to get our solder. 
I'll pull out a straight piece like this because when you feed the solder you want to have some to work with. So I'll pull out a longer section here and we're going to get the tip of the soldering gun and we're going to feed the solder onto the gun. And you'll see it's melting onto the surface of the gun. Once we get that done, we'll take the actual soldering gun and place it under the copper uh, on a direct contact with the solder that we just applied and you'll let that rest against the copper for a while. We place it under because your heat travels upwards and once it begins to warm the copper you can start feeding solder into it. You can see as you do this it's starting to absorb the copper and we can see that our copper is now turning like a silver color and that means that it's absorbing the solder and I'll coat it pretty heavily for this. I want to get a good coat of solder on there. Set our gun to the side there. You can see we've got a good coating of solder on that wire so we're going to do the other wire now. Then you can see we've got a little bit of excess on the tip of the soldering gun and you can usually just tap that off. You see how it splatted on the mat there. And we'll take our towel and just um, wipe off some of the excess. All right, so now we've got both pieces of wire tinned. We're gonna go ahead and join them together. This is where the helping hands is gonna come in handy here because we're gonna position our wires over top of each other. All right, now that we have that, we can take the soldering iron and because these wires are tinned already, we can probably just take a little bit of solder and add it to the tip of the gun because we just cleaned it. And we can begin to heat the wires. And you'll see it starts to melt. And there we go, draw across there. And we'll do another one pass on the underside. And there we go. And what I did there was when I heated up the wires that already were tinned, it drew the solder across the two wires and made it basically one piece of solder. And now when it cools, we can take this uh, helping hands off. And you can see we basically have one piece of wire now. There's a little hard spot obviously where we soldered and you can see See right there where we've got that little dimple. You can take your soldering gun and real quickly go over this and clean this up a little bit. And you're going to want to do that because when you go to put the heat shrink on, the heat shrink's not going to stick unless you're clean. Let's tap off some of the excess solder here. There we go. So now we've got our wire connection and we're going to take the heat shrink. Now heat shrink, you normally want to put it on before you start to solder because you normally don't have the other ends of your wire. But in this case, we have the whole section of wire. So we can just slide our heat shrink on from one side. And we're going to slide directly over this, the solder connection. You want to wait till it cools pretty good because if not, it'll start to shrink the heat shrink before you're able to push it on. And uh, there's no coming back from that. So now that we've got it slid over the middle of the joint, we're gonna take a heat gun, or if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a lighter. And we're just going to apply heat directly to it. Take a second for this heat gun to warm up. And you can see as it's heating up, it's drawing the heat shrink in. There we go. And there you have it. A soldered wire connection. It's going to be strong, reliable. It's going to make a good electrical connection. You won't have to worry about the connection being weak or having a lot of noise. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Be sure to like and subscribe for more how-to videos. And be sure and check out how to do everything on Facebook. Thanks, guys, and y'all have a good day.